Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about the PlayStation 2, and in particular, why I feel the PlayStation 2 is very much important in 2024. Now, obviously we have new consoles, this is many generations ago, but why would PS2 still get a mention in 2024? I mean, obviously this is almost 25 years old, if not 25 years old. It's because this is the last truly offline console. I mean, it did have online capabilities, but in terms of everything that came after this, this was the last one you could truly experience offline. PlayStation Network was not even invented at this time. And when people ask me about which console I love the most, I'm always going to say PlayStation 2. It's going to be, obviously I might on occasion say, oh, PlayStation 1 was significant in terms of what that delivered, but this took it to a whole other level. This was in every home because it was an affordable DVD player. It was something that revolutionized the entire gaming industry. Still to this day, this holds the record for most consoles sold. I believe it was around 155 million. So PS2 is a juggernaut. And I believe it still is a juggernaut, even in the PS5 era, because obviously with PS5, we do not get backwards compatibility. And obviously you get backwards compatibility with PS4. Let me clarify that. You do get some backwards compatibility with the PS5. It's just backwards compatibility is limited to PS4 games. Or if you're a member of their subscription service, PlayStation Plus uh, Premium, I believe it's called, you will get access to certain titles like Tekken 2 and whatever they decide is to be added to that service. But it's not full backwards compatibility. It's not proper backwards compatibility. It is complete emu emulation. It is completely subscription based with in the terms of PS2 and PS1 games that are on that service and some PS3 games. But it is not true backwards compatibility. There are games you cannot play from this era of gaming on the new consoles. And let me let me just clarify. I know Xbox do backwards compatibility, but even with the Xbox, there are certain games you cannot play on the Xbox via backwards compatibility. Like if I like old wrestling games, I'm obviously wearing I'm wearing a CM Punk shirt today. If I want to play something like WWE 13. I can't play that on the modern consoles. That is a PS3 game. That will not work. And I don't believe it works on the Xbox Series consoles. So the only way to play that is on a PS3. And what happens if I want to play one of the best wrestling games on this? Uh, Smackdown, Here Comes the Pain. That is one of the best wrestling games in my opinion. Now people will say, okay, No Mercy. Yes, I definitely know No Mercy is in the conversation. Some people prefer that game. But for me, Here Comes the Pain is definitely up there. Some will even say SmackDown vs. Raw 2006, the introduction of GM mode. So many games on this console have legendary status because they were in every home and you had the capability of having them in every home and talking to your friends. And when releases like uh, GTA San Andreas came out, everybody in the schoolyard was talking about it because everyone had access to a PS2. Now, there was people who had PlayStation, uh, not PlayStation 1, Xbox, uh, original Xbox, and that was available on original Xbox. These, most of the games were available here, and some were also available on original Xbox. But the reason why I give this the GOAT status of all time, uh, I don't have to say the GOAT of all time, that's basically repeating it twice, but you know what I mean. The reason I give this the title is because it is still the highest selling console of all time. It was revolutionary because it put a dvd player in every home everyone who had a who every gamer who had this had access to dvds the new format that was replacing vhs at the time and when i look at this and say okay why would i buy one in 2024 it is because this has such a vast back catalog of games that i could plug this in and find a new game every day to play if i complete them in one day i don't think i'm going to complete them in one day but let's say I'm a I'm a speed gamer and I just completely run speed run everything and go through everything in a day. I could possibly play a new game on this every day for about four thousand days. I think that's the catalog size. 
or, you know, if I'm being uh, generous, let's just say two and a half thousand or two thousand if I go off certain games that were released in Australia, perhaps. But you know what I mean? mean? Like there's thousands of games available. And people will say, well, what about the th PS3? I'm aware of the PS3. I know it exists. I, I definitely had one for a while until it died on me. But the thing with PS3 is it was very much an online console. This was the last offline one. So when, I'm, when I talk about offline console, what I mean is that games had to be shipped in a finished state. There was no day one patches. There was no fixing it up later on. This was the last generation, really, that shipped it as it was intended. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas obviously got destroyed back in the day because uh, some mother's groups online or something found that there was an Easter egg or a bit of code in the PC version of that game and it was called the Hot, Hot Coffee mod. And obviously Rockstar had removed it from later iterations of the game. But I believe, I don't know if that was on the PS2 version, but obviously the PC version had that. But you know what I mean? Like, it was truly an offline game. If if the game didn't work, they couldn't just fix it with a patch. They had to recall the game physically and release a new version of it to replace that version. So I love that this was a truly offline console. I mean, it, as I said, it did have capabilities to go online. And I'm not saying it didn't. It did have capabilities. But most people weren't connected, connecting these things to the internet. There was a big user beta base of this, obviously 155 million. Who knows how many percent would of that would have been plugged into the internet through here. And also, you know, they have mods now for these things where I don't have a hard drive in it, but I'm definitely aware that uh, Free Mac Boot, I think it's called, Free Mac Boot, exists and you just put it in the back of the console. And then you can run it as a um, almost an emulation sort of deal. I don't do that because I want to have the disc. I want to play PS2 as it was intended off a disc. And yes, I understand it's not for everyone. I'll, it means I'll have to buy games for it and play games. But it also makes means that I'm a bit more uh, picky about the games I play. Because if I'm putting money into it, I'm like, okay, I want to buy uh, I want to buy Vice City. Even this is the thing. All my PS2 games are in binders because back in the day when I stopped really playing this, when I got PS3, I put them all in binders throughout the covers and was like, okay, cool, I'm going with PS3. I'll never have to look back at that era. And not till after the fact did we really know these things were going to be collectible, did we know the games were going to be collectible. So I've still got Vice City on disc. I've still got San Andreas on disc. I've still got Crash Bandicoot from the original PS1 on disc. I've got all of these games. I've got Spyro on disc. I've got... An I don't know how uh, widespread it is now, but I've got a game called Croc on uh, disc for PS1. But this is what I mean. Like, I have these and I don't have to be online to get them. I, if they're not put out on the newer consoles or don't want to be backwards compatibilized or whatever word that is, if they don't want to be given backwards compatible treatment, I can still access these games that may be lost to history. And that is a reason to also pick up the PS2. So many games have been lost to history at this point that this is kind of a relic of a forgotten time almost. As we get more and more connected and more and more day one patch updates for games and it just ships with all these problems, this truly can be experienced, games on this can be truly experienced as they were intended. They were shipped from day one with the game and if there was a problem, obviously they were recorded and replaced. So that is one reason. This is a what the this is the biggest selling console of all time. It still holds the record. It's got one of the biggest catalogs for any game console in history. And there is so much to play on it that you could play a new game every day and be settled satisfied for like 10 odd, 20 odd years. Like there is always something to play on PS2. And as I said, I have a PS5. I'm not hating on the PS5. I'm not hating on PS4. I'm just saying that when a new console comes out and it doesn't offer backwards compa compatibility, it feels like an error of games is completely lost. Like one of the peeves I really have with the PlayStation 5 is that, or even PS4, because I've I had this peeve going back to the PS4 days, is that you cannot play GTA 4 on PS4 or later. 
it is only available on PS3 unless you jump the tracks and go to Xbox land, which they have backwards compatibility and do have that available. And for a long time, you could also only get Red Dead Redemption on Xbox as well until uh, PlayStation and Red Rockstar put out the new version, which was also problematic because they charged, what, $70-odd here in Australia for it? I bought it because I wanted to just play the game and I didn't care about the price. I just wanted to play the game and they offered me a chance to play the game and that's what I wanted. But that is not, that's not ideal if you own a copy of the game on disc and if you have a copy, I get more money is generated by producing a new copy or producing a remastered copy or producing a version that replaces the original, but it's just not the same experience. Whereas this, I can play it in its intended state. So if I want to play Vice C, I can play it in its intended state. And if I connect it up to a CRT, which I have, I can play it as close to the original way I played it as possible. And that means more than just about anything. And look, PS2 is a product of its time. I, it's definitely three generations ago at this point. Why is this though? still the highest grossing, uh, highest selling console of all time. I mean, Switch is starting to catch up with it. Nintendo are really pushing the Switch out. They have, they've made leaps and bounds. Like I've got this one right over here called the Nintendo Switch Lite. I was originally a uh, early adopter of the Nintendo Switch, which I would have said in a previous video. But until this, I had given my, my original switch away i was like oh, it's trying to be a console but it's not really trying to be a console it's trying to be a handle but it's not really trying to be a handheld and it just felt like eh, i don't really want to it doesn't want to commit to anything this feels like a true handheld and until this came along i think this is coming i don't know how close this is but i know this is pushing like nintendo are really making a big push with uh nintendo and the switch to catch up or even surpass the PlayStation 2, which is massive in my view. Like, if you asked everyone who's going to be the big seller of this console generation, obviously, look, PlayStation is the leader. Uh, Phil Spencer admitted to uh, the FCC during the acquisition of Activision that uh, Xbox had lost the console war and their focus is on becoming the Netflix of gaming. But... Who knew that, really, the console war in gaming, or it's not even a console war, because Nintendo aren't competing. They're just doing their own thing across the street and just saying, you guys over there, you go and fight over there, and we're just going to create Mario games till the end of time, and we're going to make a lot of profit by doing Mario. <laughs> and Zelda, and Kirby, and whatever else. But this is what I'm talking about. Like, this still holds the record because it is such a significant console. And... It's at that point now where if you were to give this to a younger kid who may not have experienced gaming and, or maybe they've experienced gaming, maybe they've played Minecraft, maybe they've played whatever, maybe they've played newer games, maybe they've played PS5 and Xbox Series X. But if you give this to them and say, hey, I'm giving this to you, we're going to go down to CEX and we're going to, um, we're going to look for a couple of games for you. And you just let them go crazy and you recommend them games. You say, oh, here, The Sims. Have you ever played The Sims? Now, The Sims is a PC game. I don't want to disrespect the PC gamers. I understand you're their master race. But at the moment, we're talking about consoles. And The Sims was trans trans uh, not transcoded, transferred to um, disc for the PlayStation 2. And I think the Xbox, the original Xbox. It's a great transfer. Like, it, you can play... There's a lot of Sims games on here. There's a lot of games in general, like um, Scarface. The Warriors is also a really good game. Uh, the Godfather. True Crime. Streets of LA. Um, the Getaway, a forgotten series that was set in London that was very similar to um, Grand Theft Auto. But this is what I mean. There are a lot of IPs on the PlayStation 2 that have not transferred into modern consoles and modern gaming so you can experience games on here that simply were just not further produced or also you can go back and experience previous versions like with uh, with wrestling they put out a new wrestling game every other year but you know if you want to if you want to truly play here comes the pain one of the best wrestling games 
it's only really available on PS2 and I believe maybe Xbox. Although Xbox around that time were doing their own games with WWE Raw and stuff like that, so I don't know if they did get Here Comes the Pain. I'd have to look into that, but, you know, this is still one of the best consoles of all time, and I definitely believe it has a place in 2024 because it's back catalogue. We're not getting a lot of first-party releases on the PS5. The last time I looked, I think PS5 had 12 ex truly exclusive titles on it. And this is four years into its lifespan. By the time the PS2 was four years in, we had hundreds up on maybe even thousands of titles to choose from. So this is why I believe you need to have a PS2 in 2024. Because it's something that is lost to time. And there are such a vast back catalogue of titles. Even Manhunt, a forgotten uh, Rockstar IP. Manhunt is available on PS2. There are so many titles you can just go through and discover. Simpsons Hit and Run, one of the best Simpsons games, available on PS2. I can just sit here and list off titles all day, and you will sit and you will watch me and say, um, "Oh my God, yeah, that's right, yeah, Simpsons Hit and Run," and that was not put out. I mean, I'm sure it was on PC. I'm sure it was on Xbox. But this is what I mean. There are modern limitations or in place that obviously. Sony or Xbox or whoever find reasons not to release certain games on newer consoles. And that's why you really need to have this because in 2024, we don't really, we shouldn't be forgetting games like um, the Warriors. And I know Warriors did get PS2 classic treatment on PS4 and I do have that on my, X, uh, my PS5. But something like Scarface, something like... Um, the Godfather, as I mentioned. These are games that potentially can get lost to time. And they're great games. I mean, I could go back and play them and enjoy them as much today as I did when I first played them. It just depends on, do you have reservations about it? Obviously, everyone, not everyone has a CRT. And everyone, at this point, almost has a 4K TV. And, you know, if you're trying to blow this up to um, 1080, not even 1080, 4K resolution you're not going to get great results. If you leave it at its uh, intended resolution and you... Obviously, I think this goes up to, uh, I think... I think this had some 1080i capabilities with some games. But even then, you have to understand that this was not released in the HD era. So keep it at SD resolution. Don't sharpen it all the way. Play it as it was intended. And also, the thing with this is, yes, it's got composite out, which is... Yeah, everyone knows about composite at this point. I don't think I have to explain it. But Composite is not the best output, but it also offers component, which is so much better. And you can connect this to a modern display if it has the capabilities to take a uh, com component. And it also has an optical out, so you can connect it to a sound system if that's something you can do. So in closing, why would I say you need to collect a PS2 and have a PS2 in 2024? Well, it's 25 year anniversary, I believe, this year. There is a vast catalogue of back titles that you can discover and play. It is not, most of these games are not available on the modern consoles. Sony and Xbox and Switch and whatever don't have the back catalogue that this has and the titles that this has and the range of titles these have. I mean, a lot of things got their start on this. I believe Call of Duty actually got its start on PS2. I don't know exactly if that was the truth, but... I know it definitely it picked up a lot of a collector, a lot of a fan base on this console. So that's how you need to look at it. You need to look at it as it is a product of its time. But in saying it's a product of its time, it's also one of the most significant consoles of all time. And you can, while waiting for a new PS5 game, because they're taking so long to develop these things, you could go back and say, oh, well, I'll play, I'll just go back and play Grand Theft Auto, the old Grand Theft Autos. I'm not even talking about the ones on PS2. I'm talking about you can go back and actually get the PS1 versions. One of my first experiences with GTA was pay, was playing nonstop uh, Grand Theft Auto 2, and that was a really good game for the time. You, we didn't know uh, Grand Theft Auto 3 was right around the corner. We didn't know they were developing that. And that's what I mean, like, 
you also have that backwards compatibility with PS1 and you can experience games like Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, even Crash Bash. I don't think that was ever released, but in their original form. So not the Insane Trilogy. Not I'm sure people prefer the remaster, but Crash on PS1, for example, was so much harder than it is on Insane because Insane, if you, if you uh, fall down a pit or anything and don't complete the level, you can still retry and get the gem. You couldn't do that in the original Crash. Like, if you die in that game, like, you are... You don't get the gem. You need to exit the level, restart the level, and do it again. And, yes, it drove people insane. But it was the experience of the time, and that's how it was intended originally. And that's the thing. So many... There's so many titles to choose from. It's backwards compatible with original PlayStation. And you could say, well, why, don't, why wouldn't I just get a PS3? And that's a good argument. But you have to understand, this is a lot cheaper than the backwards compatible PS3. I mean, you're paying almost uh, PS5 prices for a backwards compatible PS3 in 2024. Whereas if you have reservations and try to play this as it was intended, you could probably get into this for, what, 100 bucks, less than 100 bucks. I don't know if that's still the going price for a PlayStation 2 in 2024, but I'd have to feel that you could get this for 100 bucks if you were buying on Facebook or buying in the secondary market. So yeah, this is this is that is how I'm going to wrap it up. I'm glad you've watched me this long and if you've stuck around, maybe give me a like, give me a subscribe and leave a comment because I love to hear what people have to say about this. And we will talk in the next one. And keep supporting gaming. If you're a gamer and you love gaming, keep supporting it because we're becoming more and more niche. And as Game Pass takes off and more things are beginning to stream, more indie developers, I feel, are going to be feeling a lot of pressure. So go out, buy an indie game that you love and support. I bought, uh, I think it was Super Meat Boy because um, I love that game. And that would, I don't know who the developer of that game was, but I have to feel like I helped a small developer. And, you know, if there's a small developer I can help and buy their game and show support for a game that I like, you should definitely do it. And, yeah, that's where I want to end it because gaming is great. Gaming is better than ever in 2024, but the reason I choose to go back is because it's just better. And it's not better in terms of graphics, but in terms of range of the catalogue, the back catalogue of games to play... This is peak uh, PlayStation. This was when they were at their peak. And everyone says, oh, but, you know, hardware, and now they're at their peak. Yes, they are. In a different way, though. In terms of content, nothing even came close to the PS2. So that is why I want to end it, and that is why I believe you need to have a... You need to have a PS2 in 2024. That is why this is as important as a PS5. As my shirt is all crumpled up, PS2 in 2024 is just as important as the PS5. Why? Because the PS5 doesn't have backwards compatibility. PS4 didn't have backwards compatibility. Xbox is trying to do backwards compatibility. But if you want to play so many legendary games... They are only available on stuff like the PS2 and the Xbox 360 and even the uh, Nintendo Wii. Like, they are only available in that format. So go out, support games, and if you like this video, like, subscribe, leave a comment. And if you love gaming, that is why I feel you should buy a PS2 in 2024. Thanks for watching.